can see, we've upgraded our look on this show. <laughs> we got a very excellent young lady. And I know she's excellent because I've seen her before. And she was on the show before, and she did a great job. And I'd like to say this is my daughter, my favorite baby girl. <laughs> okay. So how are you today, Makai? I'm good. Yeah. Okay, this is Makai Green is her name. Um, we're going to go right to the business of the cosmic music and, okay. and your business. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, if you, did, if you missed the show the last, I think this was, what, two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. If you missed the show, she came on as a, um, what is it, intellectual property attorney. And so she um, brought to us some things that we needed in terms of protecting the music in our community and protecting and trying to push the music forth. But one of the most important things that she said that it really sticks in my mind and it knocked me out is that she said that it is so important for young people to listen to music outside of the commercial music, outside of the commercial stream. Because, and she is a living testament to that because with, you know, with her success, not just career success, but a success in living. And so we're very proud of you, young lady. Thank you. So let me ask you this. How are you contributing to the cosmic music scene? Um, well, thank you for inviting me back. Um, in terms of making a contribution to cosmic music, I just feel as an intellectual property attorney that it is partially my responsibility to um, preserve and to protect our music, you know, from being distorted or altered or just stolen right from under us. Oh, that's so good. Mm -hmm, which has been, you know, done very prevalent throughout <laughs> history. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, all the way from Chuck Berry in the rock and roll era through uh, Motown till today, all those artists have been pretty much infringed and their rights have been stolen. Wow. From under them. I'm actually working on a case right now involving the last poets and Abby Odun, he was the original author of When the Revolution Comes. Yeah. However, I that. yeah. Mm -hmm. a, I mean it was a, a hit in the seventies. Yeah. Um, he went to jail for a few months and at that time the publisher stole the song right from up under him. So Wow. Yeah, we're working on reclaiming him as the um original claimant for that copyright. But, I mean, it's, that's not, you know, a remote <laughs> situation at all. Yeah. It happens very often. So mm -hmm. um, I just feel, you know, it's my obligation for my clients to make sure that their music is heavily protected, you know, through the copyright laws and also just preserving it for their families and their estate and their legacy. Beautiful. That is so important. And, and I, I like what you said, too, about distortion you know the music being distorted and that's what Peter and I was just talking about before you got here okay. is that it, we have great black uh, great young people that are doing great things musically but it, the distortion is mm -hmm. taking it right out of, out of the box but, but yeah that is so cool I'm glad you were able to do that and again we encourage call people to call in if you if you so desire so the issue of privacy and and how to put, how do you protect digital music? And let me give you a quick story. Okay. Because this past weekend, Ed and I were talking to Ed Wilkerson at the concert, and and he said that he he used to be mad, and so did the record companies just be mad at people who were sitting out in that mm -hmm. audience, and they were, and then you see stuff on YouTube the next day. Mm -hmm. He said, but finally the record companies started selling it. Mm -hmm. You know, selling advertisement. Right. Okay. So, yeah, what, how do you do issue, you know, um, issue privacy well, and how to protect the digital music? Yeah, piracy is always going to be an issue, unfortunately, um, because of the digital age that we're in and bootleggers and the black market will always exist, you know. So, yeah. okay. um, that's even more reason why it's important to register your works um, and obtain copyrights and trademarks. Um, for your intellectual property so that you can enforce it against uh, unlawful infringers. And um, in terms of, you know, YouTube and other um, websites, streaming has been become a uh, um, popular alternative to downloading. And, you know, MP3s are always um, uh, popular as opposed to just 
you know, terrestrial radio or other traditional formats such as CDs. And you can get paid royalties from that, both of those. Oh, you can? And, um, yeah, downloads. So I'm, I encourage a lot of my artists, uh, I'm sorry, my uh, clients to register with soundexchange.com. Oh, really? And what they do is kind of like a performer rights organization like ASCAP and BMI, but they collect your royalties from digital sales and streams. And it's so, called yeah, Sound Exchange. Soundexchange.com. Okay. And oh, they'll cool. yep, organize and give you a monthly payout for um, any type of digital royalties or digital use and downloads. Okay, you, you just made a, a statement. I'm, I'm sure you would call it a faux pas, but I think that was a little bit prophetic. You said your artist, in other words, <laughs> one day, is that in your future to, um, to manage and maintain or, or do, well, do it from possibly, that, that aspect? Um, I have, you know, some artists I'm, I haven't really been interested or I haven't had the time, I guess, to manage an artist, mm -hmm. however... Um, I would kind of like to draw the line between artist and uh, manager and the artist lawyer okay. early yeah. on. Yeah, because, for certain. Yeah. Because <laughs> the manager is pretty much full circle. They handle mm -hmm. a lot from booking yeah. and everything. But I'm not opposed to being artist manager one day. Okay. Yeah. That's, so, that's, that's right good. Right now I just got <laughs> legal services to offer. Well, speaking of that, which uh, services do you specialize in? Um, well, I'm an intellectual property attorney, meaning I do any type of entertainment agreements, mm -hmm. um, trademarks, copyright filings, uh, also publication of manuscripts, um, music publishing, and ancillary services, uh, formation of corporations, 501c3 filings. Oh, that's a lot. Licensing, <laughs> branding, yeah, so I'm pretty oh, yeah, well that's... diverse in, as far as my services go. Yeah. Are you affordable? Highly affordable, <laughs> I like to think. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, that's, that's just good when it's like, with a person like Seva can do one-stop shop, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, Definitely. you seem to have um, covered a lot of bases in that, especially when you, you talk about music publishing mm -hmm. and... And, and and you mentioned something else, something to do with publishing, but branding, branding. too. Branding is... Mm -hmm. So what is exactly is branding? Um, branding is however you want the public to portray you. Okay. And you so. control that as the uh, artist or as uh -huh. the talent. Okay. Well, you should control it. You shouldn't let the <laughs> yeah. media try yeah. to control it for you because then they can interpret you to be anything. Yeah. So and it's they a, do. They do. Yeah. So as far as branding goes, it um, just begins with how you display yourself and how do you want the public to display you. Yeah. And That's how you kind of got in this mess to begin with is that mm -hmm. people kind exactly. of... Exactly. Uh, yeah, they they defining us for mm -hmm. us. and. And that's not a good thing. Um, with with a cosmic music artist or an artist who plays more creative music, it's it's a little bit more difficult because it's not a commercial uh, mm -hmm. product, if you will. How how do we deal with that? I mean, you just said some good things that really made me you know think about it. But if you can talk a little bit more about it, I know that that many of the artists that play uh, creative music would mm -hmm. they they would love to be able to sit down and talk yeah. to you yeah. um well i've read something that said um in order to be commercial your music has to conform to the status quo so yeah going against the status quo is yeah. is challenging if you want to achieve that commercial success yeah that heightened success but then you know cosmic music might not be for you then if you if that's what if that's your aim you. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay so um you know cosmic music is something that is organic and it's essential mm. for just your well-being overall mm -hmm. um yeah, so is there, so I guess my question is, can 
Okay, let's flip the script mm -hmm. and say that cosmic music now is the dominant music that's okay. being played. What would happen with commercial music? And I know this might be a little outside of your purview, but, mm -hmm. but you, you're pretty wise. You're wise beyond your years from what I understand. So what would happen to the commercial music in a situation like that? Because I think that's what was, was people are afraid of. When I say people, I'm talking about the business community. Um, well, there's healing powers, I'd say that, in yeah. cosmic music. And a lot of the commercial music, it can either agitate the mind or stimulate the mind. Wow, yeah. So I feel like if cosmic music was um, the dominant mm -hmm. music, then it would probably be a lot more world peace and order and <laughs> <laughs> tranquility. Um, you know, that was something that we yeah. definitely hope for and like to see. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I could only imagine what would happen if people consume cosmic music as much as they did commercial music. Wow. Thank you, Punk. That was very, I mean, that's, that's an inspiring answer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, because... We are about trying to, trying to uh, change the world. Right. <laughs> okay. So we got a couple of minutes now. Okay. So, so uh, anything that you want to tell us about um, your services or or how we can reach you? Um, definitely. definitely. Um, my law practice is primarily virtual, so you can reach me online at Green, G R E E N Law, virtual. Dot com. That's greenlawvirtual.com. And from there, I have various links to my Facebook and my LinkedIn account and Instagram account. And you can message me on either of those social media formats. Okay, uh, we got a caller real quick. Caller, are you there? Okay, uh, we got a caller real quick. Caller, are you there? Yes, I'm turn, here. Turn your radio down, please. Okay. okay. Hold on, just a second. <laughs> well, I hope it doesn't take too long. <laughs> we don't have much time, caller. Okay. Is, it, is that fine? Yes. Okay. I was wondering how to get cosmic music um, in the southern area. You mean like Atlanta? No, like Kentucky. Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky, how do we do it? Um, what the website, www.fm881, whpr.com. Well, I was talking about more more live. Oh, okay. Well, that'd be good. Contact me at akhnekg at gmail.com. Okay. I really love the program. And we love you for calling us, too. Appreciate your call. All right. And thank you, and we're going to talk with you soon. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. Yeah, Kentucky, huh? <laughs> okay. It's a global program. Yeah, here. it is indeed. And, <laughs> And this is what happens every time you come, we get calls. Peter and I don't get any calls. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all good. Um, uh, once again, well, thank you. And it, it, very quickly, repeat your website, and we're going to uh, close the show by saying thank you, everybody, for coming, I mean, for, for tuning in. Okay. Greenlawvirtual.com. Thank you for all of um, your support. And thank you, Peter. Thank you, Makai. Thank you, Cisco. Thank you.